So I was reading an article last night. Apparently one of Jupiter's moons could be on a collision course with Earth in the next few hundred years. And I thought, hmm, if this is true, what would actually occur? Now, the moon that is on a collision course is Europa. So it's smaller than the moon, our moon, obviously. However, it would still have a, it would, it would kill all life on Earth, nevertheless. And today we are going to be simulating it, and it's going to be colliding with Asia. So let me load up Asia into the lights. Here we are. And let's end the world, should we? Should we end life on Earth? Let's go for it, eh? So I'm going to actually try and slow it down as quick as I can before the impact. Here we are. It's going to hit. Slow it down so we can get a nice look at it. So what happened there is the atmosphere was burning away from Europa because it's actually got quite a small atmosphere. And hopefully, all should go well. And we have collision! So we should start to see sea levels rise. Yep. That is what is happening right now. So Australia, New Zealand submerged in water. Asia is getting submerged in water quite quickly. The opposite is happening. Water is receding on the other side of the planet. So basically, it's like a tsunami wave. Basically. Energy is just like, bam. And what's happening here is with the shock wave, the water is evaporating up again. So we should see countries be exposed back into its original state as soon as a few minutes after the waves hit. And these basically are fragments. This one's uh, more than half the size. This one, this one here is actually larger. This is a gas particle one. Particles from the mantle has been exposed, meaning it lifts up and it exposes into the atmosphere, causing gases around the Earth. Speaking up a bit, so the shock waves go around to about Australia it hits. So water is receding back again. And we should see more water to recede. I would be submerged underwater. I don't know how much deep it would actually be. Because I live around, oh, I think it's around here in New Zealand. Yep. I can't actually see New Zealand. New Zealand's completely destroyed and submerged. It would be amazing if... New Zealand somehow survived. Um, okay, so by looks of it, it had quite a impact. Bigger impact than Mars, actually. This is because it was an internal, quite an internal impact. There was more gases on the Europa, the Jupiter's moon. One of Jupiter's moons. Um, now, I believe this is Australia. Yep. And Australia is actually exposed to mantle as well. So the heat is around 228 degrees, which is pretty hot. It's magma type. But that's the whole Earth. That's the whole area of Earth. So I'm expecting this to be about 1,000 degrees. You can obviously see where Africa is still. Looks like living hell, though. So I'd say... This could be a possible new tectonic plate that formed from this impact. Now, as time goes on, we should see if there's more fragments them fall to the Earth. And over time, of course, a few hours, a few months, a few days, since the atmosphere is exposed, we'll see the return of water. We'll see the mantle cool down into a new tectonic plate. And crust radiation though will be high meaning life wouldn't be able to continue for a few years maybe even tens of thousands of years from this impact in every everything would be dead I mean radiation like this would be catastrophic and just skipping a bit into the future so it's gone this is the remainants well, there's a few remainants that you can tell was there. Like, this is, I believe, South America's remainants. But, 
Jeez, it had a bigger effect than what I thought it would have. Just new islands. However, you can tell it is a continent. Okay, so that Greenland is actually one of the islands that survived. What happens more in time a few years later? What happens? A few years, not months. So this should go quite quick. Slow it down again. Do we see the return of any continents? Oh, it looks like South America is coming back a bit. New Zealand's completely wiped out. So this potential impact could create a water world, nearly a water world. I believe this is because Eureka had some water molecules, including ice, on its under its surface. Yeah, so it has increased the water by, I believe, 0.02%? Maybe? Maybe? Um, let's go ahead and go climate and go earth similarity. See if it would be possible to have life. I think it's under materials. So it is 0.996% of earth, what it's like. And it's 90% life likelihood of life so maybe there is new life but mostly water life maybe so should we show the magnetic fields axis so the magnetic fields oh look at that Greenland's actually submerged underwater now quite interesting would see big earthquakes of course heat is huge around the planet Kind of like these. These impact craters would be volcanoes. Every one of them. The hot spots around the Earth. They could burst magma. And they even cause the heat back to go back to up to 227. That's what it was at. Wasn't it? So what happens if we expose it straight away? Well. That would happen again. So. Not all the continents were destroyed, it was just a fact water rose so much. And during this process, mass actually was lost from the Earth. And look at that. There's a bit of a funny tilt on the Earth now. And we don't have that axis like we used to have. In fact, if I go view, zone, we're around the same orbit. But, but, what happened after that? So it returned to back what it was like. So in conclusion, a impact with Eureka would actually be more devastating than a actual collision with Mars. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe for more content. Twitter and Instagrams are in the description. Thank you very much for the response on yesterday's video. That was amazing to see. 5,000 views at the time as I record this video. That was in 24 hours. That is an accomplishment for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let's try and hit that goal of 5,000 views again. And I'll see you guys in the next video.